thank you and uh, thank you to the uh, National Com Committee of uh, uh, the uh, Shasha uh, Century because uh, uh, the Italian Cultural Institute uh, worked uh, very well uh, with uh, the committee which is uh, constituted by prominent uh, uh, scholars uh, and also by two prominent uh, personalities like uh, uh, Emma Bonino uh, and uh, um, the, 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 uh, they are part of the Italian government uh, and this is uh, give the idea of how much important uh, Shasha was not only in uh, uh, the field of literature, but uh, in the field of society, of uh, civil uh, engagement. Uh, he was uh, really uh, an intellectual uh, like uh, Pasolini was, uh, able to move uh, uh, the society and uh, uh, to give uh, his uh, perspective on, uh, I think, uh, almost all the field uh, of uh, uh, Italian 20th century. Uh, I am very pleased uh, to introduce uh, Gaetana Mago de Puglia uh, from Princeton. Uh, she is a, a dear colleague, an expert, a uh, great expert on uh, 20th century literature and movie and films. Uh, and uh, Joseph Fagel, uh, who wrote uh, uh, an amazing book about Shasha. It's so interesting that Shasha comes from Sicily. is uh, really rooted on uh, this island and uh, in the same time it was able to become a sort of a global uh, writer. So that uh, our best book uh, on Shasha is written in English and not in Italian by Joseph Fagel. And at this point, I will sit there because uh, I will, uh, uh, I'd like to enjoy the, your conversation. Please welcome Gaetana Magone Puglia and Joseph Fagel. Italian way, that's to say, with a certain element of uncertainty, but I'm delighted to be here. As you can hear from my accent, I'm not Italian nor American, I'm from Scotland, but I've always loved Sicily and in particular um, Leonardo Sciascia. So very briefly, if I can talk about my connection, I remember very clearly the first time I read Leonardo Sciascia. It was in 1970, I had just left university. And we went on holiday to an area of England, the Lake District, which those of you who read the Romantic Poets, Wordsworth and Coleridge will recognise. I went not with the poetry of either of these men, but with a couple of the novels of Leonardo Sciascia, and was then overwhelmed by them. I did meet Sciascia a couple of times, only a couple of times, I discovered when I go to Sicily nowadays that the island is full of people who were close friends, intimate friends, dear friends of Leonardo Sciascia. If poor Sciascia had known all of these people, he would not have had enough time to eat or to sleep, let alone to actually write books. So I only met Sciascia a couple of times. And I've an anecdote about that. Um, when I met him first, I was staying with some friends in Licata, which is along the coast from Raccalmuto, where um, Shasha uh, lived. And um, his grandson was there, Vito Catalano, who is now a good friend of mine, a dear friend and intimate mind, un, uh, un caro amico. At that time, Vito was just a boy, and he was fascinated by hunting, which, of course, is a very Sicilian activity. So every time anyone mentioned an animal, Vito would ask the one question, Ma questo animale cos'è vivo o morto? Well, he was told that a very unusual uh, animal was coming that day to the farmhouse, a British professor, un professore britannico, and Vito asked the question he always did, ma questo professore britannico vivo o morto? <laughs> and it seems that Shasha said, vediamo, vediamo. <laughs> 
I would give anything to know what Shastra's judgment was at the end of the day, whether we decided that I was vivo or mortem. Um, I wrote a book on Shastra published by Edinburgh University Press in 1995. I was then invited by um, Francesco Izzo, who was then the president of the Associazione Amici di Shastra. The initial plan was to really republish that book possibly updating it here and there, but that basically was impossible. There has been so much work done on Shasha by so many people. So as far as I'm concerned, this is a new book, but I will confess that I have incorporated into it some parts from 1995 of my own which seem to me to be valid, um, still to be. But as I said, I have wiped out my own interest um, there has been much more written about Shasha in the meantime, so this book, which was <coughs> commissioned, so to speak, by the Amici di Shasha, and was published by Oski, this is the one we have. I'll come back, uh, I'll come back and speak a bit more about my own approach, but I think I should shut up now and let you listen to Gayatana and also to Valerio. So, Thank you very much. As you can hear from an accent, I'm not Scottish, yeah. uh, but uh, I'm very happy to be here. And thank you very much, the Rizzoli and all this time, you all for being here, finally present. So that's kind of special. And thank you very much for Fabio Finotti that he will host the conference that we will be here in New York after tomorrow and Friday, the Colloquium Shashan. That is very important that we decided to devote to the myth of the American literature and the myth of the Mediterranean literature. So the two coasts of the Atlantic or the Ocean that meets finally around the idea of literature. So the representation of the difficult reality the United States and Italy were and are living. So it's very nice to be here presenting a book that the Associazione Amici di Leonardo Sciascia was founded in Italy in 1993 that with the aim, is a non-profit cultural organization with the aim to spread the message of Leonardo Sciascia and to let younger generation to read an author that we believe is more important day by day, and especially probably after September 25th, when in Italy they will vote. So it's still wonderfully actual, and this is one component that is very important. Leonardo Sciascia loved the United States as many Italian writers during the fascism, as you know, a projection of something all over overseas to dream about a country without borders in a way. But Shasha, smart as he was, when he was really young, he just published a book of poetical prose, Favole della Dittatura, 1950, majestically translated by Anne Goldstein, recently actually a miracle, if I'm not wrong. And then in 1952, La Sicilia in suo cuore, poems, as every good uh, narrator started with poems in a way, if you think, even American one. And then in 1952, he wrote the, the, a voice for the Encyclopedia in Chicago in English on the Italian literature in 1952. So Leonardo, not Shasha, wasn't famous, was called by Americans to write about Italian literature what's going on at that time. Pasolini was born in a way, Mario Tobino, and so on. And so actually he was welcomed here in this country even before he was well known. And so he started working on American literature, reading Faulkner, for example, reading Steinway, Caldwell, Hemingway, and so on, and understanding that even so far away they could share the same aim for freedom and civil rights at that time. So as Associazione Amici di Leonardo Sciascia, it's a long time we are working to, to study the reception of Sciascia all around the world. So we published four books, this is the fifth one. Four, one on Middle East, Germany, Yugoslavia, Switzerland, and we are working on France and United States. But we were forgetting something and someone. Instead of geographical exploration, thanks to Joseph Farrell, now we have the inner exploration of the self. So the man and the writer. And this is, we think, a very important book because of that. As Fabio Finotti said, it's in English because we believe that Shash is kind of global in the sense that his message can travel. In fact, as you can see, the association is crossing the border to reach the European values of the writer. And so this book is particularly important because 
who is the man, who is the rider, which is the connection between the two, and the differences between the two. And it's very important for students, I'm very happy today we have the Tana students, to understand how it is that a rider is not a rock star and a man is not a loser. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But we can find a compromise. And the compromise is to understand how difficult is the reality. And, and how so the difficulties are pushing out, you know, sorry, out something important in the arts. So Giuseppe Tornatore, in his introduction, as you said before, says, this book is an attempt to unravel the nature of Shasha's vision, its basis in his Sicilian experience, curious or otherwise, and to explore the wider implications of the use of Sicily as metaphor. Yeah, Sicily as metaphor, reality as metaphor, and so literature as metaphor to understand the reality. We think this book is all around. It's start, starting really to understand, if we read the table of contents, the difficulties, the puzzling of Sicily, to arrive to understand the connection between Shasha and the Sicilian Verismo, for example, the Chopirandello, Verga, first of all, the Roberto, Consul, and all the other Sicilian writers that are well explained, for example, in the book. So it's not a book just on Shasha, the man and the writer, but a man and the writer in the second half of the 20th century started trying to struggle to understand its own identity and the identity of the nation in which it's working. But not only, even crossing the borders and so arriving, as we are today, and we are very proud to be here, arriving in the United States. And so to show how our writer can be really uh, useful and important, even in translation. There is a, a sentence I really like about the book, since the book starts from Le Faule della Dittatura, so the first work by Shasha. Joseph Fabel writes, the opening line of Shasha's version of the fable is a quote from Fred, Fedros, reproduced in Latin, superior stabat lupus, the wolf stood above. Word which had the function of Dante's model, abandon hope, all oh, yeah, you enter here, at the entrance to the inferno. There is no hope in the green, inhuman world where the wolf rules and the only law is the law of strength. Every generation is a stem from barbarity. The veneer of every civilization is frail. Humans behave with the brutality attributed to the animal kingdom. Ethics do not hold sway. Echo, this is exactly what students are experiencing, we are experiencing, and we are looking in books. The answer, or at least suggestion, to go ahead. As Gord Vidal, wrote at the New York Reviews of Books in 1979 about Shasha. What is the Mafia mentality? What is the Mafia? What is Sicily? When it comes to exploration of this particular hell, Leonardo Shasha is the perfect Virgil. And I think today we can, uh, we can say, who is Shasha? Who is Shasha mentality? When it comes to the explanation of this particular writer, Joseph Farrell is the perfect Virgil. And to be a Virgil in this case is someone that knows the brutality of reality and can spread light, a light before we go. Even if probably the man and the writer, Joseph Farrell, in this case, prove his own pain, understanding better a uh, Sicilian like Shasha. A Sicilian because he's Anglo-Celtic, as you like to define yeah. yourself. So an Anglo-Celtic that messed with a Sicilian order. Now I would like to add something maybe personal. I'm, I, I'm teaching in the United States since uh, 12 years. No, I'm lying. I'm, I'm teaching in Mississippi since 12 years. That's kind of <laughs> But that's great because I'm teaching at the University of Mississippi where Fabio Finotti next week will, will give a, an important lecture, the most important lecture of the university, the longest lecture. Longest doesn't mean that has to be long. It's the, it's the last name of the donor. <laughs> but we are very proud of that. And the, the University of Mississippi is in Oxford, where William Faulkner used to live, as you know. And William Faulkner used to say, to understand the world, you must first understand a place like Mississippi. And Shasha used to say, you have to go to Sicily to see how incredible Italy is, and so to understand the Italian European world. As I said at the beginning, Italian literature is devoted to American literature in the moment in which dictatorship were ruined the Renaissance in a way, you know what I mean, so all the values of Italian culture. And Shasha understood that. And William Faulkner was depicting the South, the segregation, all the problems that the South had. I'm saying the South, not the South of Mississippi. The South is always something similar. 
the south of Mississippi or United States, like the south of Sicily. And this is one of the first connections that we will explore uh, thanks to the Italian Cultural Institute after tomorrow and the day after. And so this book here is reconstructing in a way the interest of Shasha in American literature. And this is something that we think is very important to locate Shasha in the time of fascism and so the dictatorship to understand how literature can be a way to communicate with other brothers, even at the other part of the ship. Thank you very much, and welcome to Joseph Farah. Thank you. Thank well, uh, let me once again uh, begin by thanking uh, the Instituto Italiano di Cultura and Fabio Finotti for organizing not only uh, this presentation in such a prestigious place uh, like uh, Rizzoli and also the conference. But I also would like to thank Valerio um, uh, Capozzo uh, for the time he has spent uh, in bringing together such distinguished uh, uh, scholars, being a scholar himself. Uh, so I think, Joe, you will be very much challenged uh, tonight and the days to come. I'm the only one who is really not but technically a Shasha specialist. Um, uh, Joe and I go back uh, quite some time. So, uh, I have to say uh, a long time. Uh, we collaborated on projects, theater, uh, Shasha, uh, and uh, uh, I would say I'm very uh, moved of being here with Joe tonight uh, in presenting a book uh, that uh, is the definite book uh, on Leonardo Sciascia. And uh, as uh, Valerio has mentioned, uh, not only is the book on Sciascia, uh, but it's also introduced by Giuseppe Sonatore, a Sicilian uh, who knew Sciascia very well, uh, who had the cultural span of the Sicilian. And George, you are, quote unquote, a foreigner, and myself a Sicilian. And uh, frankly, um, it, uh, Sicily is not the, the south. Sicily is an island um, that has writers and artists that can span um, through the globe. And uh, the uh, great merit of this book is, first of all, uh, to go beyond the, uh, Shasha the Sicilian, Shasha the Southerner, Shasha the Italian, but uh, um, uh, analyzing um, the writer uh, as a global writer. And um, I may say in a very, uh, so to speak, that I knew Shasha myself uh, when um, I was a student uh, and I began collaborating with Novicento uh, in Via Siracusa, and he used to walk down Via Siracusa, going uh, all the way to Sellero.
have been uh, defined minor, uh, not as relevant as the most famous. Uh, in this book, uh, Shasha's characters are visualized in the field of experience, suggesting the gestures and the landscape that went with an action and an incident. Readers unfamiliar with Shasha's work would do particularly well to consult this book, which from the early fables, which were just mentioned to the late work, celebrates one of the great masters of world literature. In 10 chapters, uh, Farrell vividly and thoroughly presents Shasha's elaborate historical research, the compositions of his fictions, the so-called detective story and non-fiction, the invented genre, the essay inquiries, the nuances of the storyteller, a witness and a politically and socially engaged critic. Not only the mafia, Sicily and the mafia are almost inevitable as an association, but fascism and also its position against historical compromise. The focus of the book is on just a particular style and richness of themes that are analyzed within um, a classical architectural figure, the labyrinth, and its ethical and political values, which Farrell calls civic humanism, and deep rootedness in the culture of Sicily, which is, by no means, a region of Sicily. Uh, Farrell's wild cultural insights, uh, um, as uh, uh, it was just mentioned, with a mosaic of profound influences uh, ranging from Voltaire, Montaigne, Pascal, Stendhal, Cervantes, Tolstoy, Borges, Pirandello, Manzoni, but also painters such as Chagall, Velázquez, Jure, in Todo Modo, for example, the narrator is a celebrated painter, and so on and so forth. So Farrell really captures the spirit of the man and the writer with the cultural wide spectrum of knowledge which is very Sicilian. And I'm not saying that lightly. Uh, and uh, I, I lived, I, I grew up in the north, I lived in Sicily and I graduated from the University of Palermo. So I'm very much aware of uh, how Sicilians think, although I was always considered a continent Sicily uh, because I grew up in the north. And um, uh, I would like to bring in the two words also uh, on the character of Shasha that was not really an easygoing uh, uh, person, even if he had such a, a public persona, uh, Tornatore, and uh, not only in the past uh, episodes about Shasha, they were both very close friends where if he would find a meeting um, not to his liking, and this comes up in the book, uh, he would just walk away. Uh, like when Sergio Leone called him to collaborate on the film, but Leone was bossy, or Leone had a tough personality, and, walk, and Shasha walked away, never wanted to do anything uh, with Leone. Um, the focus on Sicily is also read as a crucible, where the past, i.e. tradition, implies continuity over time. The present is very important for Shasha, and he collaborated constantly with uh, uh, the newspapers, Laura, but also the future. So his journeys into the past are a way of understanding the present, and also to prepare us for the future. He warned us against the loss endured by Sicilian writers when they try um, to move out from their roots. And the example you bring very well is the one of Vittorini, the industrial Vittorini, but also Lampedusa. We all know Lampedusa, uh, and we love uh, this statement in uh, the leper, we are the gods, uh, the ones who will come, uh, we are the, the hyenas of Sicily, is the Sicily of the grand past. So immobility, uh, that immobility 
because it asserted civil and human rights and provided the basis for justice and rational conduct. I could bring many, many examples, but I will let you uh, later on uh, um, uh, uh, bring in, uh, but beginning with uh, the day of the Aura, the Giorno della um, Civetta, many of these books were adopted by, uh, by filmmakers. This was adopt, uh, adapted by Bagnani. The mafia culture is analyzed as power relations, as power relations who, whose power players are in the capital, in Rome, in the context of uh, uh, adapted by Francesco Rosi as a cadaveri eccellenti. Um, Piazza describes uh, it as an analogo of power in the world uh, and expands the figure of the law, judges, detectives, and lawyers who are products of the system of power as figures rarely positive. Shasha's skepticism over justice and its administration, however, is not without hope. Corruption is a permanent feature of society. However, Shasha does not close, even when he analyzes uh, highly documented cases like in Porte Aperte, um, again, uh, adapted by Gianni Amelio, or in the detective stories, Simenon and Agatha Christie as um, uh, his favorite uh, uh, writers. The clash that comes to the fore in the book is a clash uh, that at the time many uh, artists in Italy um, were analyzing, and it is the clash between order and chaos. Uh, uh, and for Shasha, the study of the criminals the detections of the crime, uh, the dynamics of order and Christ acquire a metaphysical value. A value. So uh, the detective is engaged in the po uh, per, um, pursuit of truth, which can only be relative. And uh, let me close very uh, briefly with one of your uh, state, uh, statements in the book. Shasha's inquiries are counter inquiries to establish the factual truth against injustice documented with his own minute research. And whether we think of Morte dell'Inquisitore or we address one of the great tragedies. Uh, of uh, Italy's La Fermoro, the controversial book uh, that uh, Shasha wrote uh, and called a religious book uh, um, after being appointed as a member of uh, the Parliamentary Commission of Inquiry um, uh, on, uh, on the, the Aldemar's assassination. He was convinced that the Red Brigades were not external um, products, uh, but uh, embedded into the Italian uh, system and criticizes um, the political and legal, all values that made Moro an isolated figure and brought that to his death. Uh, so uh, uh, the, the same approach comes uh, uh, to uh, an intellectual as inquiry. Uh, that is a, La Scomparsa di Majorana about the physicist who, who began working with Enrico Fermi. And uh, for Shasha, he glimpses to the future and the atomic bomb. He basically mysteriously disappeared after buying uh, a ticket to take uh, uh, 
the, the boat from Palermo to Naples. Uh, so uh, the final chapters uh, of the book, uh, and I'm concluding here, uh, address uh, um, Shasha's uh, dissatisfaction with the political system, um, a communist by heart, uh, he uh, began uh, uh, wondering where the party was leading its course uh, when uh, we began uh, to discuss the historical compromise, that is uh, uh, the way um, the opposition would govern with the Christian Democrats uh, in order to prevent uh, the country to fall into a right uh, mode. And um, uh, I like very much uh, um, the closing on the theme of death with uh, stories like Il Cavaliere la Morte or anche Il Teatro della Memoria uh, on uh, a case of disputed identity and uh, I happened to discuss with Natalie Davis uh, who wrote a year later the book The Return of Man Martin Gale, um, how much uh, she uh, loved the book by uh, by Shasha and how credible she uh, felt uh, um, his research, which was less uh, expansive than, uh, than Davis, uh, but she was, a, uh, she was a faculty at Princeton at the time. She admired, but I like the closing, the closing lines of this book. Um, uh, Farrell writes, the possibilities open to justice are limited, and it is on this note of the failure of justice that Shasha's fiction ends. And so we will have to start from here on Shasha, uh, who closes on this line. But thank you so much uh, for this very rich uh, book. Uh, and a great, a great book, a great homage to, to Shasha. Thank you very much. Okay, can I just say something, and I'll try and keep it brief. And a co couple of headings. First of all, let's be quite precise. The Shasha belonged to a Sicilian tradition of literature. Now, we must understand that very precisely. First of all, he acknowledged the debt to Pirandello, who lived um, in the same part of Sicily as did Shasha. Uh, he wrote several books on Pirandello, and his last one was entitled Pirandello, My Father, Pirandello, Mio Padre, which was a lecture which only appeared in, in publication. What's important was that initially when he read Pirandello, he recognized that this was the Sicily he knew, and he was dismayed by that. He was completely uh, upset by the recognition that the dilemmas, the, tum the tumult, the turbulence uh, described by Pirandello, particularly in his short stories, much more than in his uh, plays, was exactly the reality that he lived. He found a compensation to that, um, as uh, Gaetano was saying, in his discovery of American writers, which happened immediately after World War II, when fascism was lifted, and when it became possible to read some Americans um, Dos Passos, in particular Hemingway, of course, Saroyan, and some others um, who impressed him enormously. But I want also to put this the other way around, because when he was writing about Pirandello, he said, if Pirandello had not gone to Germany, if he'd not gone to Bonn to study, um, critics would have regarded him as differently, and uh, would have regarded him quite differently. That, and particularly, he said, he would have been known as Pirandello from Girgenti. Girgenti was the name for Agrigento until Mussolini insisted on bringing it closer to the um, classical past. And to explain that further, he referred to two American writers who are probably better remembered in Italy than they are in America itself. And allow me to change glasses because my memory is failing and I don't want to get this in any way wrong. The two writers were Edgar D. Masters and Sherwood Anderson. 
the fourth one was the author of Spoon River Anthology, which I don't think, I may be wrong, is much read in America, but is still very much admired in uh, Italy. And the other was, um, as I say, by Sherwood Master, and one of his books was called Winesburg, Ohio. He said that if Pirandello had not gone to Bonn to study, he would have been known as Pirandello from Girgenti. Now you can debate that, you can debate that. But Shasha's point was that, whereas Pirandello became known as one of the great writers, playwrights above all, of European irrationalism, uh, and Shasha had no track at all with irrationalism, he was completely and absolutely um, a rationalist, if he'd not gone there, he would have been recognized as a Sicilian writer. But we have now to ask, what does that mean? What does that mean? To be labeled in English provincialist or provinciale in, in, in Italian is not been regarded as in some way demeaning someone. He's not capable of dealing with the big themes. Um, I think this is untrue, and I'll quote, I'll quote it in English. When he was writing about Russian novelists, Shasha admired Dostoevsky, but was not very keen on Tolstoy. He writes, under any circumstance, however limited is the geographical space in which a writer lives and of which he tends to give a representation, the more possible it is to reach universality. He, 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 this is a, a direct quote. I would like at this point to go on and say that provincialism doesn't actually exist as a demeaning critical faculty. The great writers were always provincial. Shakespeare of Stratford upon Avon, Cervantes of La Mancha, um, Dostoevsky and the Russians, whom he was actually talking about, Dickens of London, Balzac of Paris, um, and above all, James Joyce of Dublin. But the supposed provinciality of these people allowed people from other countries uh, to recognize something of them. So one of my favorite quotes about Sicily was made not by Shasha, but by another writer whom he admired, Giuseppe Antonio Borghese, who writing, uh, Borghese who lived a long time in America in exile from fascism. Borghese described Sicily and it's a magnificent paradox is an isola non abbastanza isola, an island which is not island enough, which is open to the world. So when Shasha did a magnificent interview book with a woman, she was French, her name was Marcel eh, Padovan, Padovani, Padovani. It was entitled Sicily as a Metaphor. Sicily as a Metaphor. And that's why Shasha is and can be appreciated everywhere. It was not only examining Sicily in itself. If I can go on, if you permit me, just very briefly, and um, Gayatana and Valerio have both already said this. Shasha wrote uh, in two particular styles, the detective story, and he read very, very widely in uh, what we call the classical detective story, which is written in, um, um, written in English, uh, Agatha Christie, um, Erno Stanley Gardner, although the detective story writer he um, managed and admired above all was Simonon Maigret. Um, Shasha was not interested in who done it, but why it was done. In other words, if I can be very brief, a classical detective story has three elements. The crime, the investigation, and then the identification of the criminal. Shasha's uh, detective story has the crime, and the investigation, but not the third element, not the satisfactory identification and handing over of the criminal to justice. That part is actually missing. Why is that? Well, because in the classical Anglo-American detective story, we can assume that there is an alliance, a meeting of interest between society and the detective. Shasha, writing, primarily of Sicilian society, says that alliance is not there. Why not? Because society itself is corrupt. Corrupt in what way? Well, here we could go on to talk about the mafia. That um, the mafia which imposes its own way 
And he talks, uh, Valerio said, about a mafia culture. The mafia which produces in this Sicilian word omerta, which cannot be translated exactly into English, but means a code of silence. In other words, in particular in his first book, The Day of the Hour, Il Giorno della Civetta. Now, whereas the detective story would normally go in one direction, in Cheshire's novel there is a two-way. The detective who is honest and who is trying to unmask the criminal, but then at the same time figures in, of power in church and state go in the different direction. So in Shasha's novel, there is a two-way process underway. The unmasking and then at the same time the cover-up. And the cover-up is carried out by people in position of powers. That is to say, or that permits them later on to use the Mafia as a metaphor, not just the Sicilian Mafia in the strict sense, but as a, met a metaphor for power. What is it that makes Shasha, above all, and I have more to say, but I'll stop with this so as to allow people to come in. Shasha was principally interested in a number of ethical, political values, which we can call truth and justice. And in an age which has come to be labelled and to identif identify itself as a post-truth age. It's important to listen to people like Shasha, uh, who also admired George Orwell, um, to say we have to unveil the truth, we have to identify the truth. We have also then to stand for justice as against the injustices. He identifies three great forms of political injustice. The Inquisition, Fascism, and he will include Stalinism along with that, um, uh, uh, Stalinism, and then Mafia activity, which is of itself injustice. That's what he's looking for, both in his detective stories and in this other genre, which basically invented the Inquiesta, which I've translated, as Gaetano was kind enough to quote, as the essay inquiry, which is almost the genre which he actually um, examined. Uh, that's to say that he stands then for these uh, values, ethical and political values, which are most discussed in our age, in America, oh, and in many, many other countries, not only in America. That's why I think it's really important for us to rediscover Leonardo Shasha. Good evening. Thanks so much for coming here and telling us about your exciting book. Uh, what influence, if any, did Shasha's reading of Borges have on uh, Shasha's work? I mean, two great but very different writers, but with some affinity. Um, that's a very, very interesting question indeed. Um, Shasha admired Borges. He came across Borges work at really at quite an early stage in his life. He wrote some articles for um, a Parma newspaper, La Gazzetta di Parma, on Borges when Borges was pretty well unknown, not only in Italy but also in the Anglophone world. But then you want to talk about influence, and then it becomes very, very difficult, in my opinion, to actually pin down influence. We'd have to be precise when we're talking about Shasha, about the kind of books that he wrote and the things which interested him. And frankly, Borgesian fantasy was simply not one of those. We don't have, in any of the many, many works that Shasha wrote, any sign of that kind of fantasy. He was much more concerned with concrete reality. Um, so the writers that mattered to him and the influence that were, on the one hand, Pirandello, as we mentioned, and the other hand, I didn't, but um, Valerio did, Voltaire. And these almost balanced each other. Chasha had no sympathy uh, with irrationalism uh, and ignores that aspect of it. It might even be that it was necessary for him to find Voltaire 
who meant reason, la ragione, la raison, as a counterbalance to the chaos which he saw in Sicily. So I've thought a lot about your question, and I'm sorry, I can't give a satisfactory answer to it. I can only use, and it's a trite phrase, and it doesn't convince me, that we have actually a kind of attraction of opposites, because fiction of the sort that Borges wrote was not something which Shasha ever wrote. But he did admire, I mean, they knew each other, they met various occasions, he did admire and got on very well with Borges, but they were very different writers. I'm curious to see um, his response, Sacha's response, to the film Illustrious Corpses as compared to um, the book it was based on, and uh, it was Equal Danger, translated in English as Equal Danger, in the film uh, Illustrious Corpses. Yeah, I don't like the translation Equal Danger, and as a matter of fact, I don't use it in my book. Um, which might cause confusion because that is the title given to the English translation. Uh, to each his own seems to me a perfectly good translation and it has an, ecclesi an ecclesiastical overtone. It's almost a definition of the idea of justice. What is justice? Well, we've, we've been debating that since Socrates and we haven't actually come to a satisfactory answer. But to each his own is as reasonable a definition of justice as we've come to, so I would prefer to stick to that. To answer your question, um, Shasha was fascinated by cinema, but he always recognized it as being a separate art, so he basically, having um, signed it over, he allowed the director to get on with it. He was uncertain of certain aspects of that particular film, but um, he regarded or was prepared to uh, consider cinema as an art parallel to uh, the fiction that he wrote and not to criticize unduly uh, what they did with it. I think there was an exception to the first film, um, Il Giorno della Civetta, The Day of the Owl, where the plot was changed quite considerably uh, from what he actually had. Um, some people might regard it as a change for the better because he introduced a stronger female element into it. But it was not there, and he was critical of that. Um, when he was dealing with Francesco Rosi, he had a high regard for him, a high respect for him. Um, whether he was um, pleased with the outcome or not, he did not publicly attack the film that was made. If I may, if I may uh, complete your being so close to Francesco Rosi myself, um, uh, uh, Shasha immediately agreed to give the rights. Uh, they had the same approach that you have described in the film to the mafia, to the criminals, to the idea of the truth that will never be uncovered. Shasha gave uh, a, 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 a public uh, reply saying that the, the film was very faithful to his book because they agreed on the approach that you so well describe in your chapter on uh, Il Contesto. Il Contesto. <coughs> they had the same view of uh, uh, the problems that Rosie was also against uh, uh, this story of compromise. Uh, so Shasha did approve. That's because of my personal relationship. But uh, uh, in your chapter, uh, it comes out very well that was Ross's interpretation. Uh, yes, about the, um, uh, the truth and justice, Shasha. Um, how was interest, I mean, in, during the 60s, when he was writing a lot of his, his books, uh, here in the United States, there were, um, you know, uh, the, Martin Luther King was killed before President Kennedy, then Robert Kennedy. Um, so how did you react? Do, do we know what he thought about uh, those big episodes in American history where 
justice, uh, you know, somebody can still think today that for certain uh, episodes of justice and the truth, the real truth wasn't there. Did he have a write anything about it? To the best of my knowledge, he did not write anything about the specific um, assassinations that you referred to, Martin Luther King or uh, Robert Kennedy. I may be wrong in that, but I haven't come across any specific reference to that, but I'm prepared to be corrected on that particular point. On the wider thing, remember that Shasha was a man very much of the left. Um, he was never a member of the Communist Party and indeed was critical of the Italian Communist Party. But when he took part in active politics on two occasions in his life, he became a city councillor in Palermo, but as an independent in the ranks of the Italian Communist Party. This position was um, uh, facilitated by the proportional representation system, which um, um, was used in Italy, still well has been changed, but still largely there. Later on, when he joined, um, when he became a member of the Italian Parliament, as Valerio mentioned, he was a member and a full member of the Radical Party, the Partito Radicale Italiano, um, one of whose members and a colleague was Emma Bonino, who is now the honorary president of the Amici di uh, Sciascia. Now, the Radical Party was a different party from all the rest of it. It did not impose a strict line. It was a radical party. It was a party of the left. But it did not have a strict ideology. It did not require strict discipline of following. It was, in other words, the ideal party for Leonardo Sciascia, who was incapable, um, not temperamentally, but intellectually incapable of following any imposed line. So he was there. As has also been mentioned, one of the reasons sure that he accepted to stand and was elected was because Parliament was going to look into the assassination of the politician Aldo Moro and Shasha had already written a book on that and once again he was a member of the Commission of Inquiry but he wrote his own minority report on it. He wouldn't quite go along with the, um, the majority report. But it was these, but he, oh yeah, well then combined to America there was also a vein of anti-Americanism um, in his thinking. And he specifically says that while he loved America for, well, American cinema, Hollywood, and in particular for this list of American writers that he gave, um, which Valerio mentioned, which I've given, he gives slightly different lists, but I mean, these were well-known 20th century American writers and he admired them enormously, as we said, they influenced but in one of his uh, places, he says, he also came to understand that the America which were, had produced these excellent writers was the same America which was responsible for some of the corruption in Italian politics and specifically had been uh, responsible for the growing or the re-emergence of mafia power. So he was not an uncritical um, admirer of America, of American power by any manner of means. But I repeat, I'm not aware, I'm sure he was as appalled as everybody else by these assassinations, but I'm not aware of any writing uh, which he dedicated specifically to them. There is something really nice to be in the United States now and to have the opportunity to have this colloquium that we will do and today and so all the activities the Association and Comitat are organizing. Because Shasha was really well informed about the social nonviolent movement of Mississippi, for example, and civil rights. Because he had very, um, a lot of correspondences or letters with Americans, intellectuals or editors of the New York Times, for example, that they were informing him. So he didn't know about what was going on in the South through the newspapers only but the direct voice of people, that decide, white people that decided to go from New Jersey or New York to Mississippi, for example, to help black people in that time of segregation. So actually, this is the new chapter that we are studying, the new chapter we are exploring to make the book on the uh, American reception of uh, Shasha and the Shasha reception of the real and deep United States. And I would like to leave you with the last question. What was the reaction of FBI 
to Shasha's uh, books, because that's another thing that we will discuss during the colloquium. Because obviously the mafia in the United States in the 60s didn't accept, for example, a book like Mafia Vendetta, so the day of the album, when it was published in 1964 by Knopf in New York. And so the FBI opened a dossier on Shasha. And this is everything I'm saying, it completely overlooked. And that's why we are here to study in your archives and to tell you what we have to say and to correct Joseph Farrell file. Do you want to close with any, we're about at one hour or over one hour, so I'm afraid we have to wrap up, but if you have any final remarks. Yeah, final remark. Final remark. Um, Mr. Farr, you, you had mentioned that, I believe you said that um, Shasha was an admirer of Pirandello's short stories. I happen to be translating several of his short stories right now. Uh, what was it in particular that attracted him to the short stories? Oh, it's the, precisely the Sicilianness. But I mean, um, the short stories, not all of them, um, but the vast majority are set in Sicily. Uh, in other words, that they were directly a reflection, a discussion um, of Sicilian life. That was what drew it to him. That is also the case with Pirandello's early theatre. I mean, some of the short stories, as I'm sure you're aware, he uh, then translated uh, or transformed uh, or adapted uh, for the theatre. But it was the fact that these stories were dealing explicitly with Sicilian themes were giving a depiction of Sicilian life. That's what drew him to that. And we said that we could talk about Pirandello di Girgenti rather than the wider European uh, Pirandello, which he also admired. I mean, he wrote a lot about Pirandello. I mean, three you know, main books, as Valerio mentioned, uh, and many, many articles, reviews, and so on. But it was that in particular. Final remarks. OK, I don't think you have any final <laughs> remark to make, except to say I'm very grateful to everybody who's coming. Um, when I've been giving a talk uh, recently, I've ended, up with a, uh, I've ended up with words which might be, seem almost flippant. On Shasha's tombstone in Rakhal Mutu, he inscribed the somewhat enigmatic, or rather he, he uh, dictated that he wanted to inscribe the somewhat enigmatic um, ep ep epitaph. Um, we will remember this planet, is what it says. I think it's now time that this planet remembers Leonardo Shasha. And I think it would be better if we did it.